Wow, this is fun. <laughs> I'm having fun now. <laughs> this is my favorite thing to do, my favorite social thing to do, that is. I'll talk about this area of spiritual uh, ideas called sacred geometry. I'm an artist. Uh, I've always been an artist from the time I was a, a baby. I, I've always known. I guess that's kind of the only really unusual thing about me. I really knew exactly what I wanted to do from the time I was little. That's kind of unusual. And I've been uh, off and on that path over the years, and uh, I keep getting directed back to it. And I mean, even when I was a baby, I, I saw it as a spiritual idea. I saw it as a spiritual goal to make art as an assignment. Like uh, my artistic abilities was a, re a gift really to be used for spiritual purpose. And I felt that from a very early age. And that's primarily what I do. And I've been led to the ideas of mandala and, and sacred geometry. and. I'm pretty hermetic. I'm pretty, uh, pretty much a recluse. Uh, I've spent lots of time by myself. But it's been such a healing process. My experience with mandala making and sacred geometry has been, been so healing that I started to perceive that, uh, wow, everybody needs to know this. And so I was called uh, like a shaman in a way to try to express what I've, I've come to know to as many people as I possibly can. That's my primary goal for the, for the rest of my life is to, I feel a little bit like um, Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> you know, except I'm, I guess I'm Charlie Geometry Seed. Or <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm out there, you know, looking for some place to plant, plant these seeds. And that's one of the major things I want to try to get across is that this thing called sacred geometry has this huge appeal to both what you could call left brain and right brain simultaneously, which is a very rare thing. And so on the one hand, it appeals to the scientific uh, sequential time-space kind of mind, the mind that thinks about logic and numbers and mathematics and that, those kinds of things, and it satisfies totally and then at the same time, it, sacred geometry and the ideas of sacred geometry and the realities of sacred geometry appeal to our, our heart mind, our knowing, the knowing in us, the, our intuitive sensibility simultaneously. So I, I believe that if we could be introduced to these ideas, that we would see the world entirely differently. And and when I first got involved with sacred geometry, it was so mystical, so powerful, 
and I was so excited about it that I tried to tell all my friends about it and you know I'm stumbling around trying to find words that for something that there aren't any words to and I would say but 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 Sam you gotta this is it's you know and I would start to talk about it and their eyes would just glaze over in about five seconds as soon as I started talking about it and I said oh my god this is not easy to do this is really really hard well I've been practicing <laughs> for a long time and I think that I I have the words I believe and that's what I pray for I pray for that spirit will allow me to find the words and to find the passion and to find the the, the truth in a way that will touch every single person that comes to this workshop this afternoon somehow I don't know how but that is my goal and that is my intent to touch everyone and to plant some kind of seed that will significantly affect the quality of your experience here in, in this time space opera that we're in the middle of so when we one of the things we're going to do this afternoon when we get going into this workshop I've got this book which is all loaded with cool stuff I made this so that you can disassemble this and you can scan it and you can put it in your computer you can duplicate it that's the idea yeah and there's lots of templates in here though you can make your own mandalas and I want you and encourage you to play with these forms in here all right so even if you'd come and you just get the book and you stand up and you walk out you'll be ahead <laughs> but if you stay <laughs> oh yeah you'll get a lot more so I just wanted to say one more thing and I'm gonna let go I'll let you go and it, I was struck when this candle uh, was lit because the whole essence of sacred geometry is based on single pointedness oneness uh, at one moment atonement uh, unity idea undivided single pointedness and um, when Joanne said uh, this this light this which represents Christ consciousness is everywhere yeah that flame and that little dot is a manifestation of single pointedness and that flame is in all of us the same flame the same single point and that is the whole essence of sacred geometry omnipresent omnipotent unity and the way it unfolds into duality and the way it returns to unity this is an ancient 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 understanding I mean it goes way way back beyond Hermes Trismegistus it was there before the flood and now and now after thousands of years at least 5,000 years the scientists are saying wow there's this thing called quantum physics and it's saying single pointedness becomes duality and then it becomes unity and then it disappears and then it comes back wow this is a mystery <laughs> even science is embracing the incredible mystery of the universe the magic of it they're actually dealing with it right up against mystery science and mystery like this for the first time I love it we are really gonna have a lot of fun this afternoon and and we're gonna have a lot to to share with one another and I really really appreciate the opportunity and hope to see you all there thank you very much welcome can you feel sacred geometry do you feel the natural attraction come to our next workshop you'll love it I guarantee it <laughs>